How did you become an avant-garde imam? <laughs> it was a long journey, actually. Um, but it actually, uh, the, the beginning started actually when I was at the art academy um, in sculpture. Um, in the beginning, I wanted to to do design, actually. Um, but later on, I found out that I was interested in in, in uh, autonomous art because it gives me more freedom. So I decided to switch to go to the the, the sculpture uh, way, and um, I was not used to having a topic as an artist. You know, I, I didn't know what to do. Actually, I thought, okay, and now I'm in sculpture, so I'm supposed to make sculptures now. You know. <laughs> um, I wanted to, to when you have all the freedom it can mm -hmm. also be like a, like a burden because you don't, you you don't know what to do. So I decided to to do to go and find images that attracted me and I was very much attracted to the image of the the mosque of my great great grandfather mm -hmm. who was the first imam uh, of a, a very big mosque in Melilla. It's called Mesquita Central and um I was in love with that place and with the images of that place and I didn't know why so I just started making like images and paintings about uh, you know uh, abstractions mm -hmm. about that building and about that place because it was for me important um, but uh, overall I was not like really like okay I need to, to do something or something I was interested in the environment and nature and like uh, I wanted to do something to protect so uh, that place attracted me and I started making some artwork connected with that place. But I was still not really, I didn't know where I should go with my work. Uh, I was interested in, in environment and nature and I was thinking about that as well. Um, I was also doing things outside of the art academy. Uh, I was part of Salam Shalom which is an organization in Amsterdam that promoted peace between Jews and Muslims. Mm -hmm. And I helped organize an event, a conference, um, a few years ago. And that conference was about uh, tolerance and peace because there were a lot of attacks uh, in Europe th at that time. And uh, especially in Paris on Jewish uh, places and there was attacks in Scandinavia. And so all these peace groups that were in Paris and in Scandinavia, we, worked, uh, we wanted to bring them all together in Amsterdam to talk and maybe from Amsterdam promote peace. Uh, so when I called them up, everybody like arrived in Amsterdam and we started having discussions. There was an imam uh, uh, there as well and he was a very... Um, he looked different uh, in his imams. He was modern, he didn't have a beard. Um, he told me that he was also interested in art. He wanted to do actually art school as well in Amsterdam, but it, finally he didn't do it, but he was a painter, so he painted a lot. So we had an instant connection. Um, so I started discussing things with him. Normally I would never talk to an imam, so this time I, I used mm -hmm. the time that I was with him, so I asked him a lot of questions. And we arrived on the topic of human rights, especially uh, rights of women. Uh, he told me, like, I support democracy, I support human rights. And so I told him uh, that I was a bit shocked that in Morocco, women um, inherit only half of what a man inherits. The woman mm -hmm. gets half. And I saw with my own eyes that it was traumatic for my grandmother, who was the oldest in her family and had supported her parents from the beginning. And then her much richer brothers got much more money than her. Mm -hmm. She was already poor and she got the half of what they got. It didn't feel right for me. So I told him this and he told me this is divine law. And he was also a judge in Morocco because in Morocco imams are also judges. Mm -hmm. They can be judges as well. So he told me this is divine law. I'm not going to have this discussion with you. And I told him I'm shocked by this because, you know, uh, the Quran also talks about slavery. It's also talked about mm -hmm. in the Quran. So does that mean that we should have slavery because it's in the Quran, you know? Um, and he told me, I'm not going to have this discussion with you. And I was shocked by this reaction because he was a very important mm -hmm. imam and he had like a hundred imams under him. Mm -hmm. 
uh, after this, I was a bit d depressed because I'm a very spiritual person. I'm very religious. Um, I went to the mosque and I thought, if he thinks like this, then all these imams think like this because he's the most modern of everyone. He even wanted to hug me and I told him, you know, I don't hug men. So mm. he was very liberal and then this part he still reads divine law. So, uh, you know, I thought but by myself, I'm going to boycott the mosque. I'm not going to the mosque anymore. But that didn't feel right after a while, and uh, I was also struggling with my art. I didn't know what kind of art I should be producing, uh, and so then I talked to one artist, and he told me, you know, you, you should do your life in this. This is your work. It should be also about this topic, so make work about that. So I started thinking about this, and I thought, okay, um, let's search for a mosque that is... Uh, you know, supportive of human rights and things like that. I couldn't find one. Uh, I couldn't even find one online. So I thought to myself, you know, uh, I've been brought up by a mother that is very creative and, and does, have, you know, and some, when something, when we cannot buy something, she makes it. So I thought to myself, um, you know, I have this background, so I cannot find a mosque, so I create one. Mm -hmm. Because I felt I knew more than this imam. You know, if, if he cannot even have this discussion with me intellectually, he was not able to do that, uh, then apparently I know more, more about Islam than he does. Uh, I know a lot about Islam. I have been studying it. Mm. Uh, I have studied law. I know a lot about law and the history of law. So I know I can connect the dots. I've studied history. I've studied a little bit of Arabic um, in the University of Leiden and so I can connect the dots and I'm also an artist which mm -hmm. means we can create things that are not there so I I had a blog at that time and I thought I'm going to transform this blog into a mosque for myself you know I did this for myself because I was searching for something and I couldn't find it so I'm going to create it myself and I started giving sermons every week uh, as a part of my study, mm -hmm. as a part of my artwork. In the beginning, I was not supported in the academy because they told me, you know, this is not art, this is not part of art. But I just kept on doing that. And it became my thing. It became my place. And I, uh, I found out a lot of things about Islam because I have very open... You know, I'm looking at it as an artist. So I, I came to conclusions that other imams would not get because they are stuck to, to tradition and traditional interpretation. Mm -hmm. I could go beyond the traditional interpretation because I just looked with an open view to the material that I had at hand. Uh, I did the, the mosque uh, for one year. I was the first female imam in the Netherlands. Um, I, I just did it on a very low-key level. I didn't promote it or things mm -hmm. like I just wanted to make it as simple as... Because a mosque should be simple. It should not be something to be... It's mm -hmm. not PR, it's spirituality. So I ha kept it very low-key, and it was a free website that I used. It was Anyone could reproduce this. Mm -hmm. That was my goal, that it was reproducible by anyone to make it mm -hmm. democratic. Uh, so I did that for one year, and after one year I stopped because I felt it was limiting, because, because I thought, you know, I'm an artist, and I'm now like an imam giving sermons. Um, I'm talking about God, but I don't know anything about God. Mm -hmm. You know, I just know God from the book, and I read. I don't believe a theologist that they know what they're talking about. They're mm -hmm. just, you know, they they don't know the creative process of religion or what happens, or the, the, you know, it can be like psychosis, or it can. They are just bookworms that mm -hmm. they don't know anything about God. So I thought, what can I do as an artist? And I thought, okay, I'm going to search for God. I'm going to mm -hmm. do that. So then I, I became an avant-garde imam. I didn't want to call myself a female imam because I think, you know, there are a lot of male imams as well. There's, the gender should not be, mm -hmm. you know, an etiquette on yourself. So I thought I'm going to uh, depart from that and I'm going to call myself an avant-garde imam because, first of all, I'm an artist and I'm uh, doing things as an artist. So they, they, no one can tell me you are an imam or you're trying to do something that imam... I'm an avant-garde imam, so I have my own workspace, mm -hmm. which is very different from a normal imam, a traditional imam, because I can do things that a traditional imam can never do, like search for God, for example. Mm -hmm. Really, really as, uh, as literally as it could be, I was like three months, I was literally searching for God, 
and I came into some kind of um, when you're searching for something with intensity you will get answers it mm -hmm. will happen <laughs> you know even if you, you you don't believe in God even if you, do, you don't if you're really searching for something you will find because mm -hmm. you're paying attention that normally you're not paying attention so then miracles started to happen things that I felt were like miracles like coincidences people that I met things that happened but in the end I was I was like okay everything could be my god I was like almost nearing like some kind of psychosis mm -hmm. it was very similar to psychotic experience then I thought okay I got a message of uh, Icarus which is a Greek um, mm -hmm. From a geek story, and Icarus flew too high, and I saw the image of Icarus, and I saw, you know, this. If you go on, mm -hmm. so it felt like the message, the, the the God was like responding to me and showing me, if you if you are looking further for me, you will be like Icarus, you will mm -hmm. fall down, you will get sick or something like that. So then I realized, okay, I'm nearing a danger zone now, so I need to stop. I talked to my teacher and he, he told me you need to, to do like everyday things like do the dishwashing, clean the house and go back to everyday reality because mm -hmm. you're not ready to, to go beyond this. But uh, the experience was intense for me enough to realize that, that I'm very humble. Who am mm -hmm. I to talk about God? Who I, th I saw all the imams talking and the priests talking. And I thought, who who the fuck are they to think that they can tell me? Because when you are like nearing that kind of a reality, it becomes real. It's not a fairy tale anymore. It mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> it's very real. I didn't get an answer that God existed, but I didn't get an ex answer that God didn't exist. Mm -hmm. But I was. It was intense enough for me to realize that I had so that I had something that mm -hmm. that I was nearing my own barriers. Uh, so what did I do in the end of my project, uh, because I had to make art of course out of it, you cannot present art like pictures from Facebook and YouTube and photos of everyday life, you know, it was a mixed cocktail of images, so then I, I felt like I was in some kind of a matrix and that it's an intelligent matrix that when you put something into it, it answers uh, mm -hmm. you, that's what, I, what my theory was. So in the end, I uh, I make it, I made it very simple. I, I started making images of myself. I had a camera because we had a project. It was about the unknown. It was like neighbors, but for me, the unknown was God. Mm -hmm. So then mm -hmm. I started making images with my body, and I made it with a camera, and I started making like these kind of images and. When you do with your body, it can become like almost um, geometry because mm -hmm. we have this divine pattern in our body, you know. The, the, so, my end conclusion about God was that God was in me, like mm -hmm. that God was in, in the the way I was made in my own fabric. I was like some kind of part of a matrix, maybe a matrix myself. So that was my conclusion. I made that artwork and. Um, that was the first artwork of me as an avant-garde imam. What is your holy mission? It's difficult to answer that. I have not found the answer, but maybe um, to be to live naturally, to be mm -hmm. a normal human being, and to be uh, to live as honest. Maybe to live. Yeah, if I can answer you, to live honest and to live with integrity, but also to reach my highest potential. Okay. To, to not be afraid to reach my highest potential. Why is it important for a woman to preach Islam? Um, I, you know, I actually, I, I, I don't believe in a distinction between like it's important for women or it's important for men or, you know, mm -hmm. we all have a calling in our life. And uh, I feel that when you have a calling, you need to do it. And it doesn't matter what kind of job that is. If you have a calling, you should do it. And for me, the calling is Imam. It's mm -hmm. something that comes very naturally with me. Uh, I didn't realize it. It, it came to me. Okay. So, um, if people tell me you cannot do this because you're a woman, maybe I will find a different path. I will mm -hmm. do it differently. Maybe if this doesn't work, if I cannot be a traditional Imam, maybe it's better for me to not be a traditional Imam. I want to be different. So I'm an avant-garde Imam. <laughs> Which is okay for a woman, you know, if you, because I'm not allowed to be an imam, so let, let him be an imam, and I'm not allowed to be an imam, but that gives me 
the freedom to find out what I can do in a different way. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and do you, do you think women should do this more? Like, would you like to see that? Uh, more female uh, imams? Yeah, that more women will think, would do this, what you do. You are a human being and you, mm-hmm. you come here to the earth um, with a certain mission or with a certain reason. And if you find happiness in, in something, that you, ne- you need to do it. And uh, if you're not allowed to do it and for some crazy reason, then you find a creative way to, to, still, mm-hmm. to still be able to do it. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. You preach through Facebook, um, uh, through a Facebook group and a blog. Mm-hmm. Um, and why did you choose to go online? It was the easiest way to yeah. create a mosque. And also that you wanted to be reproducible, like anybody could. Yeah, uh, anybody could, could, could copy and, and 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 do it. Do it. Um, so you you are based online and how do people react to your promotion of arabic culture and islam online i have all kinds of people like uh, people that are like anti-islam and that are posting in their own page a lot about uh, anti-islam and there are people that are like living in iran and that are very critical about islamic hoja and they are projecting it on me as well so i get all kinds of like feminists too there they come Mm. to me and some women are just simply haters, I don't know, they, they also come to me and find a way to, to struggle and fight with me. I, I think I, I get reaction, I t- mm-hmm. but I, if I come somewhere, people will get uh, give a reaction, it, it, it happens automatically. Uh, but for me, I, I try to be as authentic uh, mm-hmm. as possible, so if, if I feel I need to say something, I say it courageously, I'm not afraid of... Uh, backlash or things like that. I feel that you need to have courage as an mm-hmm. artist. If you don't have any courage, you shouldn't become an artist. That's how I feel it. Mm-hmm. Um, so have you encountered censorship and how do you deal with I it? Did. Uh, the first censorship came actually from a page called We Want Women Imams page. Yeah, it sounds ridicu- ridiculous, but there was another page besides my mo- uh, my own. Okay. It, 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 the name was We Want Women Imams page, and my name is We Want uh, Female Imams. Uh, we Welcome. I changed yeah. it into yeah. We Welcome. They kicked me out of there uh, because they didn't want to post my sermons. It, it, it's, there, is a lot of, uh, there is a lot of jealousy also within the feminist movement. So they kick me out because they don't like me. So my reaction was, you know, what should I do now? It was the same thing as with the imam. I was not, you know, he didn't want mm-hmm. me to do so. I thought, okay, I create my own group. So I created a group where everybody was welcome mm-hmm. because they were censoring everybody. Only they could post certain things. It was like the same people posting things. So I felt this was not the Islam mm-hmm. that I promote. So I created this group that was the same as theirs. And uh, in my group, everybody could say what they wanted. That was as long as they respected each other. That was the ground rule that you, okay. you, don't, you don't attack people personally. But on the topic, you can say whatever. So I have <laughs> Israel Islam haters in my <laughs> Facebook page. So it's a, it's a very diverse uh, company. <laughs> but also very powerful that you, that you are uh, like allowing people to express themselves and allowing a space for these people yes. that mm. it is powerful because yeah. then you get real uh, authentic dialogue otherwise it just becomes propaganda I, I mm-hmm. don't feel Islam should be propaganda I don't feel like there should be one type of Islam I feel like it should be with respect to everybody and uh, it should be on the topic I ha- I'm enough confident about it did you experience people change their opinions in your because of your group I think so uh, there, were, there are people that are um, very much anti-Muslim and anti. I have real rednecks from the United States in that group, and when they see that I respect, change, you know, treat them with respect, they are also open to my version of Islam. Mm. So now they know that not all Islam hates them or not all Islam. So mm. they have changed their perspective on Muslims in general. In the summer of 2018, you went 
on a two-week Hajj to Paris. Actually, I didn't know what a Hajj was, <laughs> so maybe I should ask first, like, what is a Hajj? <laughs> okay, H Hajj is one of the five uh, pillars of Islam. It's the last one. It's uh, when you have the, the means, mm -hmm. you need to go on a, a pilgrimage to mm -hmm. Mecca and Medina. And after the Hajj, you know, your, your, your soul can get like cleansed and mm -hmm. you, can re you can start from the beginning uh, in your life. This is like a spiritual journey, mm -hmm. actually. Um, so I, use, I went during the Hajj, I went to Paris. Yes. And that, yeah. So that was the question that you went to Paris and there you tried to reach to religious institutions to collect money for orphan girls of Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. And how was your action perceived? Uh, well, I started in the Islamic mosque. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a very big Islamic mosque, uh, the Grand Mosque de Paris. Uh, I went there first. I thought, you know, I need to go first to my own religion. And the mm -hmm. Imam there was not very receptive to me. He, he listened and uh, I told him, you know, can I sit to tell you the story and the, why I came here to see you? He told me, I don't want you to sit because I'm busy and uh, please go ahead, what do you want? Uh, I told him wh mm -hmm. what I came for and he told me, this is not part of my job as an imam, goodbye. It was very <laughs> short, uh, his answer, <laughs> goodbye. And the, the funny thing was that he had a big sermon about the period of Hajj and how important it is to help uh, mm. to the poor people and that it will count a thousandfold. So it didn't correlate with what he said during the sermon and how he treated me when I came to him. Um, I also went to the synagogue. Uh, there's a very old and ancient mm. uh, synagogue and the rabbi was very nice with me. He did a, a, a blessings uh, for me. But on the project he didn't respond. I sent him the email with uh, the project I did. He didn't respond to that. Um, but I also went to a Jewish lady that had a shop next to the synagogue and she, she gave me a few free gifts and I had a very interesting talk with her. And um, I also went to the churches, I uh, went to the Notre Dame and there I met a lady from uh, Église de Notre Mère, Maria, the only mm -hmm. Maria chapel. Uh, it's the house of Maria and every nun in that house uh, was called Maria. They all <laughs> were named Maria. And I went there, but they, they helped children, French children, but they couldn't help the African children because they, uh, the, they didn't have the, the means to, mm. to help me because they, they, did, they told me they didn't have a free bed because I was really looking for a place to stay. Um, in the end, I, I, I went to a lot of churches, uh, maybe 10 or more, and uh, none of them actually helped me. Eventually, you raised 500 euro, yes. you said, for the Sunday Foundation that you presented to Chief Awadibs. Who donated to your cause? So who donated who to my cause? I can tell you who donated. Uh, <laughs> the, the, one of the first donations uh, came from a guy that I met in, the, in an African church. And I was introduced by the pastor of that church as why I came and what, what happened and everything. And the guy came to me and he gave me like a hundred euros mm. and it was just he didn't want anything back for me he was just like this is for Jesus and this is for this is to help the, the girls um, I met a lady who had a bike shop in Paris she was also from the Netherlands and she invited me to, to sleep with her in her mm -hmm. house so that saved me on hotel cost and she also like made dinner which saved me on restaurant mm -hmm. And she even brought me back to Enschede in her car. Mm. <laughs> uh, so that was that, that was a lot of money that I collected. There was one guy that that I met in a cafe, and he paid for my breakfast. He wanted to date with me, but because he paid for it, it also went to the to the girls. I met uh, an ex supermodel who was a friend of a friend of mine, and she went when she was younger to Sierra Leone herself before the war, and she she came to me and told me like, here you have money. Um, who else? Many people. There was also from America. There was a guy mm -hmm. who saw my project in the blog, and he sent like a, a hundred dollars in in mail to mm. to support my cause. There was this girl, uh, a Muslim. She it was a convert from uh, Czechoslovakia, 
and she sent also like she was not in these people sent me money because I was not asking for money but they it was like they were paying my hotel costs mm -hmm. so she she paid also like 77 euros also for for my hotel costs and uh, there was another Arab lady that cooked for me like every time I got invited she invited me like offered me dinner so I saved also money for you know, for so the then dinner. you compensated um, what what you received from them. You paid your own money. Basically. Yes, exactly, okay. exactly. So uh, the, the 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 food was like uh, I could have eaten it in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. So the money I could have spent went directly to yeah. the girls. What you talk about it, it does like make me think of um, what what Jesus was talking about how you should live you know that you should live in a certain way and he was also very against uh, the the churches and mm -hmm. the, the 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 corruption I guess mm -hmm. like they're yes. making money mm -hmm. and uh, uh, so this kind of attitude is very interesting because it's really um, that authentic kind of exactly. religious um, mm -hmm. spirit that mm -hmm. you that you're trying to follow. And um, you see the same things, basically. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And it, it was for me very different because normally, like Muslim, think, okay, I need to go to the mosque. But mm -hmm. I went to all these religious. I went to the. the there was an Algerian a, a, a church that converts to mm -hmm. Christianity. I went with them. I was to, in the synagogue. I I went to the black church. I went. You know, I saw all these places. And the funny thing is, I felt at home in all those places. Mm -hmm. I felt God was for me. I was. Feeling that spirituality in all those places, I couldn't make a distinction. Like, mm. okay, this is the. I feel privileged that I was able to visit all those places because now I know it's they are all the same mm -hmm. places of prayer of God. Maybe many people don't believe like like I mm -hmm. do, but I can feel it. I was like in the Notre Dame, and I really felt connection. Like there was a saint. I felt like, you know, I could mm -hmm. feel that there was a saint. It, it, you know, it was it was direct connection, and for me it was not okay. This is Christianity. This is, I'm an mm. outsider here. I felt like oh, it's the same place of God, but just a different color, and there yes. are many colors. On your blog, you mentioned that your Hajj was not covered by the Dutch media, no. although you have approached them. Mm -hmm. uh, how important are your online platforms to write yourself into society and history? So I'm using the word "write yourself" and it comes from "écriture féminine," the the French kind of they dubbed as feminist uh, writers, but they were actually not explicitly feminist; mm -hmm. they're just female philosophers. Mm -hmm. But they were uh, rewriting uh, philosophy, kind of from oh, okay. from from um, more poetic kind of female perspective. Mm -hmm. So so they they thought that the um, scientific language was too. Um, barrier that was a bit force I guess w w similarities with you but I'm using this word write yourself uh, because you you kind of I like do you even need the me <laughs> the media do I need I you know because I I am an imam I have this like faith in the guidance of Allah it's mm -hmm. something that I chose to have faith in I see it with my mother like a blind faith in God that God will guide you mm -hmm. so uh, my faith is not in people so it's not just okay I think oh I should be nice to this journalist so that mm -hmm. they can publish me I'm you know I don't give a shit about journalists or things like that uh, I feel that God has uh, guided me during my pilgrimage to meet the right people and that mm -hmm. is what happened so even the, the establishment journalist did not respond to me I found the non-establishment journalists mm -hmm. and they were interested in me and uh, so I was not from the establishment and um, I guess what I'm trying to ask is how is important these online platforms mm -hmm. to document like your work to, to be to, to be written into society um, through these blogs and Facebook mm -hmm. pages, like because that is your it's my archive, yeah, you know, yeah, that's uh, yeah. your proof that you doing these things. Exactly. Um, at the moment, I think it's very important because I don't get published anywhere else. Uh, so I need mm -hmm. to do that in places like Facebook and in places like uh, Blogger. Um, and I don't feel that is uh, any way uh, inferior to, to mm -hmm. other uh, ways of expression because you, you get to reach people and they get to read it. So um, maybe it's even more democratic because other people can copy it. 
It's okay. difficult to copy yes. a newspaper and to yes. do it like that. So when I'm de- you know, and I'm mm-hmm. gone, I don't feel that I'm only living for myself. I'm living it as an experiment for other people to show you know how you can do things. And uh, for me, I like it to keep it low key because I like other people to feel like okay, I can do this as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I see that a little bit with Pussy Riot and Femin, mm-hmm. that they also do certain things that can be copied by other people. Uh, it's actually very um, um, controlled. It's very in, controlled. In okay. Femin and in Pussy Riot also. But I mean, someone that's why cannot do that uh, to, uh, no. as well to go somewhere and put on Femin uh, to do that. Yeah, they, 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 mm, if you do it, they might uh, use it, but like they are the ones, like Ina Shevchenko is the one in getting invited to all the conferences and stuff like that. So they will not choose a girl from the street that just put on a flower crown to to do the important work or get the money, for example. Oh, okay. So, so it's not... And, it's and not Pussy Riot, I think, also, like, certain people benefit. Like, certain people get to be invited, get to be paid. And uh, um, there and the were more people not. in that group, but you don't know about them mm-hmm. because the... Um, yeah, yeah, but let's not talk yeah, about I don't, it. I, you know, I don't support that. It's not what I would like to do. I, if, I, if I would get, like, s- certain fame... Mm-hmm that I would get paid and that I would get uh, things like that. Um, I think I would use that uh, for making it more accessible mm-hmm. again. And uh, be, be, Otherwise, if that person dies, if you know, if yeah, the family, it stops. That it stops. Yeah. So you need to, to not think just about me, you need to make sure that the goal is, is most important and not mm-hmm. you as a person because you are apparently not that important. As, yes, as much as we think we are. Ev- everyone is, they say, you know, there's no um, indispensable people. You can substitute anybody. <laughs> That's what I say. For me, it's, uh, you know, I don't, I don't you know, I, I went to, 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 to Paris mm-hmm. as a pilgrim, and but everybody else can do that as well. Yes. And say I'm going to Paris and go to the religious groups or maybe go to some other groups and do this. Uh, and send to the journalists, and maybe they will not react as well, but maybe the journey, the spiritual journey, will help them as well, mm-hmm. like I was helped to, to, to realize things. So Why did you actually choose uh, Paris? Because Paris is lo- uh, known... Well, actually, I, I first of all, I just wanted to go to Paris. I love mm-hmm. Paris as a city, and I wanted to go there, but on the on the... As I was planning to go there, uh, I saw an article about these girls. Okay. So then I thought, you know, I would be a bad person if I read this and then go to the Glamour City and, you know, the Paris is diamonds mm-hmm. and love and all that. And these girls, these kids exist. I thought, you know, this is the city of love. These kids need, they need the love. So mm-hmm. I need to be, as an imam, because I need to support these things. Um... Uh, I need to do something with this, otherwise, it, you know, it would not be fair. So I thought yes. I'm going to do it as a, as a hajj, and not, and that happened. It was not a plan. I'm going on a hajj. It was I'm going on to Paris to help these kids. But then, oh, it was during the hajj. Mm. It, it, mm-hmm. Maybe it sounded like I, I should have known that it was hajj as an imam, but I was not focused on that. I was focused. It's my birthday. I want to go to Paris on my birthday. Mm-hmm. It later on became a pilgrimage. Came together. Yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what is your ideal audience and how do you want to Im- impact their lives? Um, what I see now is the audience that I have now is my ideal audience. Mm-hmm. Uh, my ideal audience are people that are low-key, low not really the famous people, but they are very independent. Mm-hmm. I think my, my the, the audience that would like me as, a, as an imam are independent thinkers, not people that belong to a certain group. More independent people that are that have their own opinion and they want to research the truth, because that's what I do as an imam. I try to mm. for myself. I try to research Allah. I try to. I'm very. I try to be very sincere in in what I do, even if it may sound stupid for someone else to say, mm-hmm. "Okay, she's looking for Allah." You know, the, the stupidest. <laughs> idea I've ever heard but you know it's an art form so I can do it you know <laughs> so uh, yeah that kind of people yeah I think uh, talking to you I don't think it's so stupid like w- why not people were always living with God <laughs> yes exactly 
so it's it's kind of new actually. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Not a yes. New God. <laughs> but even the people that were religious, there was one Christian girl to me. She said, "Well, God is everywhere. Why are you searching?" She found. <laughs> she told me, "Told me you are crazy to search because God is everywhere." And I thought, you know, I'm a naive person. I want to, you know, I want to see with my own eyes. You, okay. know, <laughs> you were looking for the burning bush. <laughs> exactly. I was looking. I wanted to look for the burning bush. I'm not just say, well, God is everywhere. I'm a, I'm a bit mm -hmm. still, you know, I'm, I'm religious, but I'm also very uh, Dutch or uh, very, mm -hmm. you know, I, I need to see with my own eyes or I need to experience it. I cannot say, okay, God exists and then pretend live like God doesn't. Because a lot of people say God is everywhere, but they don't live like it. No. They don't no. really take it seriously mm -hmm. what they're saying. So I wanted to make a sincere effort in, in something that may maybe would be seen by other people as stupid. But for me, it was important that mm -hmm. I, as an imam, that I need to search for Allah uh, because otherwise I don't know what I'm talking about. So would you call yourself a feminist? Um, I would not call myself a feminist, but I do call myself to communicate my ideas to others and uh, to, to show them wh which side I am. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, for example, there are many religious female imams or uh, in Morocco or somewhere else and they don't want more rights for women. They mm -hmm. say it's okay for women to get the half. So to, to make clear that I don't agree with that, I say I'm a feminist, but mm -hmm. actually I'm a, a humanist. Mm -hmm. But because I'm a woman, I call my humanism feminism, but mm -hmm. I, what I actually want is humanism or maybe to, to even include the animals in mm -hmm. it, to, to make it like universal to um, more love in the world. That's mm -hmm. what I would like to. I think that a lot of feminists want that. So yeah, this is what <laughs> nowadays. <laughs> I, I I don't. I, I'm confused. Uh, to be honest, I'm confused about what feminism is because nowadays, I mean, uh, you, ha you first of all, I studied feminism. I know there are a lot of feminisms, different ones, mm -hmm. and um, and a lot of people trying to include everything into it. It's about women and getting getting their position, their their their. That they are equals to the, mm -hmm. uh, y you know, I don't believe in a feminism that says, you know, the, there should we should have two left hands, that women should become like men. That, <laughs> you know, I feel that we should become equal to each other in the sense of having a left hand and a right hand. Mm -hmm. Women should not want to become more like men. We should become more like women. And when mm -hmm. we become more strong, I don't want to become an imam. You know, there are other female imams that I've seen. One is in Germany and one is in America. They shave their head like a man and they wear trousers and mm. everything is like a man. So I, I don't want to be like a man, you know, mm. I want to, I wear feminine clothes. I, I like to be a woman, even in my approach, mm -hmm. in the way I do it. So my feminism is not one, I need to become like a man. No, I want to help a man because one hand, if in societies where you see that, that only the men have rights and women don't, you see those societies are not working mm. because you cannot... You cannot have a balance if you one hand is this big and one hand is very small. Mm -hmm. You cannot work together. So for me, it's like you need to have women that are really women and you need to have men that are really men mm -hmm. so that we are equal in, 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 w in a way that we can collaborate, that we can, um, that we can make it work. Do you think uh, that religion has more potential than feminism to unite women? No, I, I don't believe in institutions or labels or names. I only believe in people. Mm -hmm. And it really depends. It doesn't depend on the feminism. It depends on the women behind that feminism. Mm -hmm. If the women are in solidarity with each other and working, it doesn't matter if they do it in religious uh, form or feminism form. But I do support the idea of women uh, having an idea that they want to help women. Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, because you need to first help yourself before you can help others. If your position is is low you need to first build up yourself before you can build the outside mm -hmm. so um i think i think every woman should be a feminist if she sees that society in the society that she's living in women are still behind mm -hmm. so i think if you're not i think you are you're hate self-hating you hate yourself <laughs> or you're not you're not smart enough because you cannot not do anything alone you're not you're not alone you, you're part of a system what can western feminists learn from islam uh, 
for my Islam. I don't want to say all Islam because there's many ways to do many Islam. Many <laughs> so also, from the way okay. I, I do this, yeah. like I want to talk from something close to me, from okay. the way I'm practicing Islam. What can Western feminism learn from it? Um, Maybe I, that there are many different uh, ways to practice Islam? That as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, they can learn that. Uh, what can they learn? I think you can always learn from someone else. I think Western feminism, um, from the way I practice Islam, if I, 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 can, I can inspire Western feminists, it would be, I think, that Islam has a certain sensuality, mm -hmm. a certain belief in, in, uh, in, in humanity or you belief in um, prayer. Mm -hmm. power of prayer and the power of uh, doing something without expecting something back from it uh, because w in in my religion it's it's that that whatever you do you do it for yourself you know it's a, you get everything it's karma it's the, mm -hmm. you know so what they would learn from my islam would be that they sh they don't have to be beautiful from the outside to be mm -hmm. loved uh, they don't have to be rich to be important because God is the important of everything. So if you're connected with God, you don't need to, to have these fake uh, gods uh, around you. And I think you don't have to compete with the men to be powerful. You can, you can mm -hmm. find your own truth. So um, I find Western feminism a little bit uh, aggressive mm -hmm. um, and a little bit masculine as well. Which is not bad, you know, I'm not judging it, but I think they are losing something very uh, precious, mm -hmm. which is a, fem a certain femininity, a certain, uh, certain th that is very powerful as well. And I think that uh, they are losing that, um, they have lost it, and I think Islam, the way I do it, can, can inspire them to, mm -hmm. to connect with their own spirituality, with their mm -hmm. own... Um, that there is something more than just uh, getting power. How can women reach their full potential? Uh, I think women first need to heal themselves. Mm -hmm. And if you heal your, your past uh, pains or the way mm -hmm. uh, the society has been treating you, of course women have their own challenges in mm -hmm. the society. Uh, a lot of times women don't get taken seriously as men are. Uh, in the family or in society in the big hall, uh, but I think um, the best way for women to find their truth is to first not to try to change the world, but first uh, change yourself mm -hmm. or heal yourself. Like when you when you are cleaned of, of your suffering or the issues that you have, you are much more powerful. Mm -hmm. You're far more powerful. People that that I can I can see that people that have been healed by their traumas or whatever, you can see that these, these people are very powerful. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a different kind of power than um, control and, you know, being famous or things like that. It's powerful because whatever they're doing, they're doing it from a, you know, it's, 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 from, a, it's from a secure, powerful mm -hmm. uh, way. So I think women can do much more if they are in that space of power than if they are in that space from anger or victim mm -hmm. or... We can tend, I think, especially feminism tends to speak from f from anger or from mm -hmm. victim space, and and then that, that's the way we don't get taken seriously when you when we use that energy. I've seen that uh, in a lot of Me Too movement and mm -hmm. things like that. That a lot of women say, "Well, we need to pick up all the men because the men uh, they have done it, and if they haven't done it, well, that that's not very bad, you know. We first need to catch them and need to." I think when you talk like that in the newspaper as a journalist, I think you have issues. So even if they want to make a change, their issues are blocking them to really make a change. You cannot say that you can do that. An innocent man to, to make him uh, mm -hmm. like to blame him and that if he didn't do it well it's okay because you know we should support women more than men that was the message of the, the newspaper mm. I don't agree with that I think when you talk like that you talk like a victim or you talk like someone very angry so then the men are if you are a man it's you you're guilty if you're white you're guilty it's it's a bit like that and mm -hmm. I can also see it in the 
Zwarte Piet discussion. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you follow that discussion. A little bit, yes. Yeah, and it's this comparable to the feminist struggle. I see so much that women are doing wrong in the Me Too movement. I see it in the Zwarte Piet movement because people want to change the Zwarte Piet, but they do that with anger. They, mm -hmm. You know, Sofana, Simons, Kizigario, it's with, we need to change. And I think they haven't healed themselves first. Mm -hmm. If they if they first heal the pain and the anger and clear that up, they will they will be powerful. They will be listened to. They will not be ridiculed or that's what I believe. Mm -hmm. People will not fight them because yes, they will I think that's you know, a very will, interesting point you're making. But I was just thinking about this these people by just happens to be that they uh, I think they're both um, foreigners. Mm -hmm. And uh, I noticed there's different attitudes about this. Like you have a lot of uh, uh, black people that uh, that that don't have issues with with the with the Sparta mm -hmm. um, That's had an equal upbringing. That were equal, and they they they're not insecure about this. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think maybe they confuse uh, because I'm a foreigner and I also have issues with. Racism when they mm -hmm. point out to me, oh, you you are not Dutch. Where are you from? <laughs> oh, your name is foreign. Oh, yeah. you you're Dutch. Oh, your exactly. Dutch is really good. And yeah. but every time, yeah, I feel a bit strange because I'm like, what are you trying to say? You know? Exactly. Um, yeah, I, I I I don't know. Like, what? Why are you pointing out that I'm not like you? In my uh, project, when I was doing a, I, I was doing a daily diary. And um, at one time I used black paint and of course uh, body paint and of course I used it like obvious, mm -hmm. like blackface. And uh, first I thought like, yeah, it's tricky because like it has a certain connotation. So if I do this, if I paint my face, it will be like, eh. <laughs> yeah, but do it anyway. And then I painted myself black and I put a white um, a mask on and... Um, and yeah, it's I think interesting image because like what what are you talking about? And I'm looking for a certain ambiguity and maybe a bit painful ambiguity in my work. Mm -hmm. And um, and okay, I think something happens. But then I uh, posted it finally on Instagram, and I got some angry pr people uh, that were um, in the Swartpit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. like my friends, my friends who are like one black girl and one. Uh, girl that's uh, affiliated with England and uh, she's going to London a lot so she's like in this whole discussion about racism mm -hmm. a lot I guess and I decided because it's painful like because apparently I'm I'm black facing so I will be mindful of that I will delete it because yeah who am I like want to I want to trigger someone but like why am I trying to trigger the black people I mean mm -hmm. why, why am I trying to you want to trigger everyone, not just one group. Yeah, but I started to think about it, like why, wh why did I want to do with that? But what it brought me to to do is uh, to um, uh, actually the color green. I, I thought like if I will body paint myself green, well I have the same <laughs> problem. If I even body paint myself green, and I can still like uh, stand in the position of like slaves in in the in the Renaissance art, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. or something like that, or just uh, paint, pa paint myself green and then call it black black peats, you know. Where where's, where's, the, boundary? A, where's the boundary? Yeah, yeah with, with this. Uh, yeah, so it's really difficult. Like, but there's also uh, about artistic freedom. Like, why can't exactly. you use black body paint? Exactly. Like, why why is it racism? Art. Actually, they're why, why is it racism if I use black body paint? Yeah, exactly. Why is it <laughs> racism? Because a black person, can, if they it use white It was a white coincidence. Paint, I just had black body paint and didn't have it. I think that a lot yeah. of uh, the pain of slavery is not solved. Many people no. are still in pain. That's why these things are sensitive. If, if it was solved, if people were healed, you would be able to do black, white, whatever color you mm. want. It would not directly be associated with racism. It would be just the color that you put on and you can wash it off again. But the problem is people now are very sensitive because everything becomes very uh, politicized mm -hmm. very fast. So um, 
I, I don't like the movement because I think art should be a neutral place. It should be a place where you can uh, research things, even if they are sensitive to some people. But you're not doing it to, to do racism, you're doing it to express something of yourself. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that they should stop it unless you really want to do something racist with your purpose is racist, mm -hmm. you know. I think that is the, the frontier, if your purpose is racist, but if your purpose is artistic, um, even if you want to feel how it is to be black, mm -hmm. or you know, it, it's it's art. I think you, sh you should not judge art um, because art usually has many meanings. It mm -hmm. changes with time. Um, if you do like that, you become like the ayatollahs. You know, you become like okay, this is haram, this is halal, this is. You know, it, if you start doing like that, it mm -hmm. becomes like a dictatorship, a censorship, mm -hmm. and I don't like that. Mm -hmm. Personally, I don't like yeah. that.